Ladies and gentlemen, germs and microbes, welcome to another fascinating episode of the Microbial Comedy Club here on the Infection Tube. I'm Spark, your trusty guide through the wild world of microbes. <laughs> Tonight, we're diving deep into the world of Legionella, the bacteria behind Legionellosis. Let's get started with our special guest, Leggy, the Legionella. <laughs> Leggy, you're looking lively. But before we get too comfortable, let's talk about the two faces of Legionellosis. Do you know the two faces of Legionellosis? The two faces are its two clinical entities. The first is Legionnaire's disease, Legionella pneumonia, and the second is Pontiac fever. Legionnaire's disease is a type of pneumonia that's clinically and radiographically similar to other forms of pneumonia. The main symptoms include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. These symptoms usually show up two to 10 days after being exposed to contaminated water or soil. Often, fever and fatigue come first, followed by a cough. Common x-ray findings include patchy unilobar infiltrates, which can progress to consolidations. Certain features might raise your suspicion for Legionnaire's disease. Gastrointestinal symptoms like vomiting and diarrhea, hyponatremia, elevated hepatic transaminases, C-reactive protein levels more than 100 mg per liter, failure to respond to treatment for pneumonia with beta-lactam monotherapy. Pontiac fever is another form of Legionellosis. It's an acute, self-limited illness with flu-like symptoms. Patients usually recover in two to five days without any treatment. This syndrome might be a reaction to inhaled Legionella antigens rather than an actual bacterial infection. Now, let's talk about what causes Legionellosis, the bacteria Legionella. Legionella is a gram-negative bacillus, which means it has a cylinder rod shape and doesn't retain the crystal violet stain used in the gram staining protocol. It is aerobic and fastidious. Fastidious means that it is picky about its nutrients and has very specific and complex nutritional requirements. It needs special growth conditions or enriched media to be cultured successfully in a lab. Think of Leggy as a picky eater with very specific tastes. He won't be happy with just any old food. Among more than 15 Sarah groups of Legionella pneumophila currently recognized, Sarah group 1 is most commonly associated with the disease. Do you know the main criteria of Legionella? Remember it by Leggy Targets AI. Leggy is our star Legionella. T. Targets the lungs through A. A. Aerosol transmission causes R. R. Respiratory illness. Community-acquired pneumonia, caused by G. G, gram-negative bacilli, transmitted through E. E, environment, loves water and soil, causes T. T, two clinical entities, Legionnaire's disease and Pontiac fever, treated by A. A, azithromycin, levofloxacin, that are effective because they target I. I, intracellular organism. Diagnosing Legionella can be tricky. Legionella infection should be considered in any patient presenting with pneumonia. Do you know when to think more about Legionella? Look for risk factors like older age, smoking, and chronic lung, cardiovascular, or renal disease. Immunocompromised patients, especially those with impaired cell-mediated immunity, are at higher risk and have poorer outcomes. If a patient with pneumonia isn't responding to beta-lactam antibiotics, think Legionella. Watch for unusual courses in viral infections. It could be Legionella. Rare but fatal cases of Legionella and COVID-19 co-infections have been reported. Whom to, te whom to test? Because early diagnosis and administration of appropriate antimicrobial therapy are associated with improved outcomes in patients with Legionnaire's disease, we generally test the following patients. All patients with moderate to severe community acquired pneumonia. Those hospitalized with community acquired pneumonia. Any patient with community acquired pneumonia or nosocomial pneumonia with possible Legionella exposure. Immunocompromised patients. The main testing options for Legionella infection include 
PCR, urine antigen tests, and culture. Because the urine antigen test only detects Legionella pneumophila serotype 1, we generally send PCR or culture on a lower respiratory tract sample when urine antigen assays are negative and Legionella infection is still suspected. PCR has high diagnostic accuracy and detects all Legionella species and serogroups. Do you know where Legionella lives? Legionella is a waterborne disease. It is found in both water and soil. Within water, Legionella can live planktonically, in biofilms, or as intracellular parasites within protozoa. So how does Legionella spread? Legionella bacteria are typically transmitted to humans via inhalation of aerosols derived from water or soil. Do you know how to treat Legionnaire's disease? We generally include an antibiotic that targets Legionella, for example, a fluoroquinolone or macrolide, when selecting an empiric antibiotic regimen for most patients with community-acquired pneumonia. Levofloxacin and azithromycin are the preferred agents for the treatment of Legionnaire's disease because these agents are bactericidal, achieve high intracellular concentrations, penetrate lung tissue, and are active against all Legionella species that cause human infection. The minimum duration of therapy is five days for clinically stable patients showing no fever in the last 48 hours. Patients with mild infection generally require five to seven days of therapy. Patients with severe infection or chronic comorbidities generally require seven to 10 days of therapy. Extended courses may be needed for immunocompromised patients or those with complications. And that that's a wrap for tonight's show. We hope you enjoyed learning about Legionella and its tricks. Remember, Legionella is sneaky, but with the right knowledge, we can outsmart it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Infection Tube for more microbial adventures. Stay healthy, stay curious, and keep those hands clean.